I also want to mention the um, the nutrient content. I, I mentioned this previously when we were gathering our castings. The um, amount of nutrients that you have in your final compost tea is going to uh, be uh, uh, determined by the types of foods or, or, or materials that you put in your compost, whether it was an outdoor compost bin or a worm bin. Uh, it's going to, if you put nutrient rich uh, substances in there like manure and those types of things, that's what you're going to get out when you have your compost tea. And uh, there's some additives that, that people add like kelp and things like that. Um, you know, we'll discuss those as we go. But we're just going to let this brew for a while and we'll come back to it in a little bit. I have placed a um, support under this back corner to do what we talked about earlier, which was to shift the bubbles around. And you can see I've got them coming up on the back side now, and I'll do this again a few times before we are done with this uh, compost tea. I mentioned I'm using a very rinky-dink um, air pump because I couldn't find my uh, larger dual air pump. So, uh, but I think this is going to work okay for us uh, nevertheless. It just might be a little bit less moving around if you have a better air pump. I've let this uh, tea brew now uh, overnight. I decided to let it go a little bit longer because we're, um, now the birds are really talking this morning as you can hear. I've um, decided to let it uh, go longer because the, the weather's a little bit cooler. We're in the 60s and um, if the weather was warmer, I probably would let it go like about eight hours or so, but it takes a little bit longer with cooler weather. Um, something else that I'm going to do is add just a little bit of vegetable oil, and this will allow the, the um, compost heat to stick a little bit better, have a little bit better coating um, when I apply it as a foliar spray. So I'm just going to put about a cap full, about a cap full of that in there. To know that you've got a good quality finished uh, compost tea, you should, there should be a sweet smell to it, kind of an earthy smell. Uh, you don't want to use, and I forgot to mention this prior, previously, you don't want to use compost, whether from your worm castings or your compost bin that is not well aged and processed, because if you do, or, or if you don't get enough aeration, you will get kind of a garbage smell and it needs to smell nice and fresh and earthy. If you have any of that garbage smell, throw it out because that's not going to be good for your plants. Um, nutrients. Uh, a lot of people add um, uh, kelp and whatever. I mentioned to you that you may not get sufficient nutrients uh, depending on what you've added to, to make your compost to begin with. Uh, some, some people add kelp and so forth. Um, I've read of uh, a person that uh, actually adds a little bit of urine. Um, a lot of people use urine for fertilizer and if you're not uh, taking drugs and don't have a high sodium diet and you're otherwise healthy, uh, you can probably get a really good nutrient, save a little money and um, put a couple little tablespoons of urine in there too for your nutrients, just as a suggestion. So we're going to let this, um, what we're going to do now I'm just going to stir this, give this a good final stir, and um, then what we're going to do is just let it, I'm going to unplug it and let it sit, and let it settle out, and then we're going to strain it out and spray it. We've set up a, just a little cheap inexpensive garden sprayer and I've got uh, I've got some nylon stocking on top that I'm going to use to strain it. You can use a, a paint strainer or whatever and we've let our compost tea settle for about 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, you, you will need to use your compost tea fairly quickly. Uh, you've got a couple hours or so or maybe a little longer to use it before the, the um, microbial population begins to go dormant from not having the aeration and so forth. So it's something that you need to make up a batch of it and use uh, whatever it is that you're going to make. Also like to mention that um, 
Another way of knowing that your compost tea is ready if you're using uh, strong bubblers or a strong um, air pump is that you will start to notice sort of a frothy uh, coating on the on the surface of your of your tea. Uh, we didn't get that because I didn't use a whole lot of compost and I didn't have a real strong air hose. But, you know, a lot of you may be asking of, of why use compost tea as opposed to just using compost and spreading a little compost around your plant and uh, just watering it in good and so forth. Well, you're going to get you're going to get a pathogen, uh, fungus, and even an insect repellent uh, property uh, applying this stuff in a foliar man uh, manner. There's substance called uh, chitinase um, that will help with this. All the, the aeration and the sugars are greatly going to expand the microbial population. And even though I mentioned earlier like conflicting studies that, that tend to show that there's not a lot of benefit to this, um, I've, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that says that there is and I'm a little bit leery um, of some of the stuff coming out of universities. Uh, I had a friend a number of years ago that uh, was a organic uh, farm inspector and he was uh, trying to teach some organic farming techniques in different colleges and um, was basically denied and he was beginning to tell me stories about the funding that these um, agricultural departments receive from um, the major uh, chemical companies and so forth. I won't mention names, but so I don't know. I'm just, uh, I try to shoot for a middle ground. Also, the, the nutrients, the microbes and the enzymes uh, are going to be absorbed more readily as a foliar spray than just putting them to the root zone. So that's some of the reasons that you might think about to actually make the tea as opposed to the um, just the compost applied to the root zone. So we've let this uh, filter and now we're going to begin to apply it to our plants. To apply this on a non-windy day, but one can't always um, control or predict these things. This is a avocado plant plant that I've been treating that's had some kind of a leaf blight or something and I've had got some good results so far with this uh, compost tea. Have some tomato plants here. Got a blueberry plant here. We've got a wax myrtle plant that's uh, looking pretty poorly. It's got some kind of, um, I don't know, some kind of uh, blight or something, which is unusual for a, a wax myrtle. So I've been treating this. This is the kind of plants that uh, that you really want to treat. Um, compost tea is said to help also with uh, transplant shock. Here's a tangerine that got damaged by the cold. I'm going to come back to most of these plants that I'm treating and also um, for the remainder of the um, compost after I've strained it all out to my uh, to the root zone of all of these plants. I've one full sprayer and i have uh, going to make about another quarter of a sprayer, let that finish filtering and spray the rest and then uh, the rest of this I've still got a lot of um, compost in the bottom here, a lot of uh, that is settled and what we're going to do with this, um, I'm just going to take my little spring just lift my uh, my air filter baffle out of there and I'm going to mix a little water with the rest of this and put it in a watering can and I'm going to just apply this 
mix it up and apply it to the root zones of several of my plants. And um, that will complete our little discussion um, on compost tea. Thanks for watching.